Chris Long back here from a Greenlight Podcast as well as Inside the NFL on the CW back here on the show. How you doing there, Christopher? Rich, what's up, man? I would ask you, but I I know. I, I, I don't know what to say because uh, because you can't sit here and say the Jets didn't plan for to make sure that um, Zach Wilson was done playing meaningful football for them. And yeah. and so and, and I don't blame Robert Sala for saying he gives us the best chance to win. Where you going to turn to Tim Boyle on Sunday night against uh, Mahomes, Kelsey and Taylor Swift? Like she's not going to be there in New York. <laughs> Seriously, like so, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so mm-hmm. for for sure here, that that I just don't know how you keep the, things together in the locker room because how do how do all eyes kind of not turn to him, even though there are other fingerprints on the reason why they lost? Chris, what's going on in that locker room? Do you think here? That's the hard thing, man. It really is. And like, yeah, I, your point about Salah is well taken. I mean, what else is he going to say? I might say, hey, we're evaluating this thing every week because the, the elephant in the room is pretty obvious. Is like the guy is probably one of the biggest problems with the team, if not the biggest problem. And I have noticed that there are still some like Zach Wilson hanger ons. Like people are still like, hey, it's not his fault, that sort of thing. I would say at times they didn't get a lot of separation yesterday, but. The issue is everybody in the locker room is suffering because of poor quarterback play. It's not like when you draft a guy at linebacker, <clears throat> he's going to affect maybe the defenders in front of him, some of the reads in, in 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 the passing game. You know, the quarterback, Garrett Wilson, not getting the ball. You know, he's rotting there. Um, he's an elite wide receiver. His career could change because they can't get him a guy to throw the ball to. The offensive lines are getting skewered. Um, you know, you read the pressure numbers. They're gaudy. How many of them are on the Jets' offensive line? How many of them are on Wilson patting the ball too long? So those guys are in a bad mood. And the defense, you, you said last week Bill was going to make the the Dolphins' offense work, keep it in front of them, you know, keep them out on the field. And then this week you knew he'd come in and work that Jets' front and make sure they're on the field a lot. And for them, no leads. They're exhausted um time possessions out of whack and and you know no sacks so the entire organization feels it when the quarterback can't get on you know get going and i feel for those guys i feel for zach wilson because just when he thinks hey a lifeboat aaron Rodgers, maybe i can quietly wait in the wings for a few years get my second chance somewhere else i don't know how you come back from this whatever the next chapter is for him chris long here on the rich eisen show let's talk about the top of the division here because what a, what a game between the Dolphins and Bills coming up this Ooh. weekend and what it means. What are you seeing from the scheme of the Dolphins? Because, again, I, I want to – clearly it's difficult to adjust on defense if you don't know the speed until you see it, right? Because yeah. they're fast. But what is McDaniel doing with the speed that might be different from what other coaches are doing with similar or close to that amount of speed that they have, Chris? Well, I don't think anybody's got quite as much speed as they have. And then they go get the running back from Texas A&M, A-Chain, who, who goes off yesterday for over 200 yards. And I think the most interesting thing about them is you look at, like, the offseason through the lens of additions, subtractions, the draft, free agency. But I think McDaniel got in his bag and and figured out ways to, A, keep Tua clean, because when he's clean, he's great. I mean, he's played great this year, and they've kept him clean having to cycle backup tackles and that sort of thing to get Armstead back this week. But they figured out a way to do that. And then they figured out a way to make that run game lethal. I mean, that that is unfair to be able to – five rushing touchdowns, eight and a half a pop, 350. Um, Norm Van Brocklin's name's coming up, 1951. It's never good. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, like, it's just – it's – they're so good in the run game because they get sideways so fast. So you get out and you're like, it's like standing in a freeway and watching cars go by, whether it's, you know, the motion, the same side motion, the layering of looks, I think is the biggest thing. Like as a defender, especially a second level defender, it's, it's layering different things you have to think about pre-snap and then post-snap, you know, it's motion one way it's pullers. uh, And then, Oh, it's pass. Uh, and then, you know, they got us sideways the entire game. We're going to knife the ball downhill. We're mixing in gap scheme. We're going to get guys on the second level. I think the run game is a real weapon that they've started to showcase. And I think smart by him, we haven't gotten this, we haven't gotten this rookie a bunch of touches. The Broncos are so bad defensively. It's not a secret. 
let's get guys going this week. Uh, really embarrassing for the Broncos. I don't know that I've ever seen a game like that. And I've been a part of some bad ones. Like Sean Payton said, I've been a part of some bad ones. He's been on the other side of it. Never seen one like that. And Vance Joseph, like last week, the commanders put up 30 something points on you and they get shut out this week. So not that you're looking at that score, but you're like, damn, we have a long way to go. Uh, that Dolphins offense is special. Before I move on with the Dolphins a little bit more, let's linger on the Broncos. Did they did they quit? Did they quit? Did you see guys quit on the field? I don't know. And I know and I know that's very infused. I understand that you can't accuse an NFL player of anything worse uh other than maybe, you know, throwing a game purposefully. Yeah. You know, what do you what do you think, Chris? I don't think you know, I, I don't want to throw the Q word around, uh, but I do think there was a point in the game where it became apparent that they had no shot. And it, the scariest thing about this thing is like, if I were to tell you, you're the Broncos, you're down 21, 10, things have not gone well in the first half, but they give the ball to Ingold being aggressive on fourth down and you get the ball with five minutes to go chance to make this one score game. This shows you how good the Bronco or the, uh, the dolphins are and how bad the Broncos are defensively. They go to the half down 35, 13. Mm-hmm. It's 21-10 with five to go in the first half. And most teams are thinking about, hey, one possession here. Can we eat up three minutes, give it back to them, play two-minute defense? But because of the way they played at the end of that half, they were totally out of it. And then the second half, you could see mentally guys are out of it. You know, I don't know about quitting, but there's a hopelessness that comes with playing on a defense like that where you're like, there's nothing we can do. The space, it's stacked against us. We can't tackle. You got Chosen, Anderson, or um, Robbie, I can't Chosen. Remember. Robbie Chosen. Robbie Chosen. Because at first, he he did Chosen Anderson, and yes. Anderson was on the nameplate, and they had to go back to the DMV and be like, hey, I'm here again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, I think it's where you get your passports, actually. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, like, you got him beating Pat Sertan for a touchdown. You got Mike White in there at the end of the game. I don't know if they quit, but that's that's as close as you get. I mean, the Bears are a dumpster fire. I don't know where it's more miserable in that defensive room this week in uh, in in Denver or in Chicago. And, you know, Garrett Bowles, I'm sure you saw his comment saying, you know, for seven years I've gotten my brains beaten in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of losing. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you know that feeling as well. What, what would I you felt ca- like Garrett Bowles for 30 seconds. It brought me back. Um and, you know, like he was a high pick, had trouble, you know, out the gate for a year and a half. And he kind of came on and, you know, I, that's a guy that I, I felt happy for as he's he's starting to play well individually. But like if you're a Bronco, you just like where's the end of the the tunnel? Um, Sean Payton's supposed to be a lifeboat. He's talking about the coaching job. The last team uh, did the last staff you've got. I mean, I joked yesterday you've traded for Sean Payton at times, like go trade for Bill Belichick and get the defense right. Cause honestly um, it's like, they fix the offense. People are talking about, Hey, Russ isn't playing well. He's actually Mm -hmm. the offense looks better. Um, But who would have thought the defense would be the problem? I've got uh, Chris long here on the rich Eisen show. And before we move on to the uh, NFC, um, who, who can beat the dolphins or, or handle them best. And, the reason why I'm bringing that up is not just because of what we've just seen, and it could be Buffalo coming up this very weekend, but you look at their schedule, and Miami plays Kansas City in Frankfurt, Germany, which I'm calling on NFL Network. I cannot wait for that game. In case you're wondering, the average temperature in Germany in November is below 50. It's about 48 degrees. Who knows? And then you look at the back end of their schedule. They have that game after Thanksgiving at the Jets. Who knows who's going to be the quarterback then? And then just at Washington, at Baltimore, the rest of them are at home. So it's not going to be like they're going to – the track meet will be, uh, you know, te- uh, tested not just by defense but by mother nature as well. Who do you think has is best equipped? And you could even include teams that they might see in the Super Bowl to, to beat the Dolphins and defend them, Chris. Here's the thing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the road to the Super Bowl went through – Miami I I think they've kind of quietly because of some of the past outcomes or injuries last year or like the fact that they started this exact way last year kind of came down to earth in some some spots I think people are overlooking the fact that they might be the best team in the league right now 
Um, when you look at their defense, when you look at, you know, the additions that I talked about and the schematic adjustments they've made, I think the big test is this weekend. Uh, you know, the Bills sacked Sam Howell nine times. Mm. He went Oprah with the interceptions. Uh, you know, everybody got one. And if you look at, like, the Bills, how do you beat Tua? How do you beat, you know, the Dolphins? Well, you can't beat Tua if you don't hit him. And that's a cliche, but, you know, he hasn't been touched this year. And so somebody's going to come along and not let, let the tackles off the hook. But it's it's easier said than done because the timing of that offense. You know, you look around the league, there's a bunch of young quarterbacks right now who seem to have all the talent, and the processing is slow. You know, it's like a pat long, you know, that sort of thing. You're just, you're just back there a, a quarter second late. Um, you know, thinking about where you're going with the ball. Tua doesn't do that. Uh, the ball's gone. And so I think you got to have rushers that can win. I think you got to be able to take away the middle of the field. So like when they played San Francisco last year, you know, having a Fred Warner that can patrol the middle of the field, run with the seam, the whole thing, there, there aren't many teams that have that. So I think when you look at the Chiefs, obviously the Bills, uh, the Eagles with that front, and some of the weapons uh, that they have, the Niners. I think the Cowboys would be a really interesting matchup, you know, yesterday notwithstanding. Uh, so they're in that elite group of teams, and I think you have to have a very specific formula to beat them. But the scary thing is the way they're playing right now, I haven't seen anybody do it. Chris Long, the Green Light podcast host right here on the Rich Eisen Show. What is your takeaway from the Dallas loss in Arizona, Chris? Okay, so red zone, like offense, red zone. They ran almost made plays, I think, as Kansas City in there. They come away with the points they came away with, and Kansas City comes away with like 35 points. So, you know, when you got three guys down on your offensive line, that's that's a bad deal to start the day. Um, I think Diggs being out hurt them. They got more man than they wanted to be in, I think, probably from a standpoint of just communication. Like, hey, we got a bunch of guys playing that uh, haven't played together, let's try to man up. But the run game, the run game is something I worry about with them. You know, the interior of the line, I think everybody took a turn. And I have to give my, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Jonathan Gannon and the run game and the head coach getting that team ready to not be afraid of the Cowboys. You know, like these Cowboys are coming in, all their fans are coming in. We're going to have to go on silent count sometimes. We're going to throw the ball 20 times. And we're going to pound it. And we're we're not going to let Micah Parsons get comfortable. You know, Micah Parsons saw a million different looks. And as a rusher, by the time it's time to pin your ears back, you start second guessing. And, you know, throwing multiple tight ends over there in the run game, giving him three, four-man surfaces, reducing him down to a five, and then making the second-level guys tackle. Everybody took a turn. And there was a play with Rondell uh, Moore, um, he went for a touchdown, I think, on this play. But I don't think Micah saw a true two-man surface for like five minutes. And by that, I mean no tight ends, no junk, nothing. And he just flies up the field because he's trying to get get one. And, you know, the, the gap's huge. The three technique inexplicably takes the inside move. So everybody took a, a turn in the run game. I think they'll be better. The run game does worry me a little bit. The, the O-lineman will be back. But they were running the ball for 5-5 five, five a pop. Like, just stick with that. And before they knew it, <clears throat> they were down. Did you see, uh, speaking of different fronts, did you see two tight ends travel wherever Miles Garrett traveled? The Titans, and, and it caused the Titans to have a uh, a delay of game penalty because Garrett, I guess, either noticed that and kept moving around and two oh, tight yeah. ends traveled? I mean, I've never seen anything like that. That's the Calvin Johnson of, uh, you know, when they had all those dudes out there on Calvin Johnson. Like, right. I've never seen that with Calvin, never seen that with Miles. And I think, you know, it's funny, people had, they were all pissed <laughs> off because last week Pro Football Focus had Miles Garrett, the top-rated rusher out of the game. Highsmith played a great game. Yeah, Watt showed up. But Miles was. I mean, Miles is. If he's not around the quarterback, it's because they got four guys over there. They're running away, uh, or or they do something with quick game. Um, if if he played in Dallas, yeah, I'm so tired of hearing. Oh, and don't forget about Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is is the guy. 
You know, last year, Nick Bose had the best year. He's DPOY. Mike is like the second coming of LT right. in a lot of ways. But Miles Garrett is Julius Peppers. I mean, he's he's like a more compact pep. I've never seen a guy that big run on the side of his cleat as often as he does the top of the rush. And he plays on grass. Okay, when I play with Robert Quinn, you know, he had 18 and a half one year. He'd run sideways, you know, but he was 260. And we got the turf. Miles Garrett's 285. He's digging those spikes in. And he is at the top of the rush as good as anybody. Yesterday, the first pass rush he got on Dillard, he almost killed Tannehill with Dillard. It's right. Um, <laughs> you know, and and they and the problem with that defense is Jim can just like Jim's got the group he had with us. Mm -hmm. We didn't have Miles Garrett, but we have Fletcher Cox the depth we had in that 2017 D line room, but he's got the guys on the back end, you know, uh, war Delpit, all those guys, they can man up, uh, they can compete and you can't get anything going against them. This defense is a lot of fun to watch. And with Derrick Henry, they just stack the box say, Hey, we're not going to let Derrick Henry get going on I 71 here. Mm -hmm. I can hear Jim Schwartz saying it, cut him down before he can get going and make Tannehill beat us. Chris Long, couple minutes left with the Greenlight Podcast host after so much to talk about in week three. Uh, you, I'll give you the floor on the Bears. And, and I mean, it's tough to imagine a worse start from the defensive coordinator going poof yeah. and Justin Fields saying what he said last week after you and I spoke about being robotic and then clearly going to Kansas City with the Chiefs having lost to the Lions in their home opener and everything going on there. But, um, you know, it, it, it it's as bad as I, I could see it. And, and, and a team just had 70 put on them and lost by 50, Chris, you know. With Taylor Swift in the house. Exactly right. I know. I mean, look that's what, a young team. They are all probably Swifties. That's hard. <laughs> look, um, look what they made them do. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, really, dude. You know the songs. Yeah, you know oh, the songs. Uh, I listen to them I, all the time. My kid, my kids. They're, they're, one of them's a, one of my kids is Swifty. The other, he's like not, not a Swifty. Okay, but um, there are arguments. Yeah. I feel bad for Justin Fields. I do. I think part of it is him. Like I don't know if he can ever be the guy. And I was on the bandwagon. I'm big enough to admit when maybe I'm wrong and I think maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I also think when it comes to, um, you know, draft picks and the context with which they enter the league, uh, this is not a formula for success. He's obviously not being coached uh, well enough to, to feel like he can be aggressive. Uh, his head's messed up. You can tell. Uh, and they're just not a good team. They remind me of a lot of teams I was on, you know, the Garrett Bowles, type Rams teams um, where you take the field every Sunday and you're just like, we're going to lose. How hard do we fight? That's the only question. And it's already gut check time. You know, I've been in buildings like that where if you've never been in an NFL building on a Monday that's playing the way the Bears have, there is no more stressful place in American sports. And um, I feel for those guys getting off that plane, having to go back into work. You got no D coordinator. Kansas City just hung 40 on you. Uh, the quarterback's probably not the guy. And I I can remember arguing with Bears fans because I'm like, Justin's the guy. They know better. They've been going through this since, you know, post-85. Um, they're like, we're holding on to that one. We don't want to trade for Chris Jones because we might need it. Uh, and I was like, you're crazy. You're not crazy. You're miserable, and you should be. Um, and you're good at being miserable and you see it coming a mile away, I totally feel for you. You guys don't get enough credit. Jets fans get a ton of credit for putting on a brave face. You guys uh, hang in there in Chicago. It's rough. Yeah, because he, he Justin Fields survived Bryce Young, but he, he ain't surviving Caleb Williams if that happens. No, no. If that, if that No, he's not, and he might not survive, period, with that. Um, and I think, I think for Justin, the real unfortunate thing is in a parallel universe, and, of course, like, hey, I always say, hey, you know, it'd be cool to go. I could have got drafted too. Uh, got drafted too. We go one and 15, two and 14, all that stuff. If I'd have fell to, you know, seven, the Pats are there. You know, like, mm. how does your career go? Um, I don't know. And Justin Fields, 
I don't know if he dra- he got drafted somewhere else, like in Houston. San Francisco. What if, San Francisco. What, if, what if Kyle took him instead of Trey Lance? You know, I mean. You'd probably be having a different conversation, but the reality of the NFL is, like, your legacy is based on what actually happens, and uh, I feel bad for him. Who's on your pod this week? What do you got for me, Chris? We got Marty Smith. Uh, Marty Smith's coming on. We're going to talk about his new book coming out soon, so uh, check that out, and then Friday, back with Stanford Steve. Uh, by the, the way, whole game day crew, basically. Hey, look, and, and congrats on your new uh, media company. You want to pound the table on that? What do you got here? Well, it's called Yod House, but it's not, you know, I don't want to oversell it as a media company. It's okay. like a, a, you know, it's a small business, okay. um, you know, and love people love talking about small businesses. We, we know all business about owner. it, Chris. That's what we're, yeah. that's what we're operating. So we're going to have more pods. Uh, we've got, um, you know, a pod with, I don't know if you remember David Vibora, Mr. Irrelevant yeah, is what they called him, but he's lived anything but an irrelevant life. Right. Uh, you know, he's insane. He, he's been on these survivor shows oh, yeah. on a raft in the Caribbean for four days, getting attacked <laughs> by sharks. He climbed Kelly with me. He just did the Leadville race out there where they go 100 miles in 24 hours. And he does an adaptive training uh, center down in Dallas for wounded vets and that sort of thing. So that guy's going to be sitting down with a bunch of people who have, you know, challenges to overcome. We've got facts in the king. We're just slowly, slowly is the key word, expanding. Well, as you know, I'm always up for whatever you're up for, man. You're awesome. I just love Thanks, seeing brother. you. What's going on with you? you. It's it's the truth, and you know that. I'm not just saying that Thanks, publicly either. Good to see you, Chris Long. You the man. Great Thanks to for see the you, time. Rich. Appreciate right, it. Right yeah. back at you, Chris Long. Everybody, check out Green Light with Chris Long podcast. His growing empire, right here on the Rich Eisen Show every single Monday. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern for free. 